capital, a city, a ceremonial county, and a unitary authority in England. I don't even know what any of that means. I love Bristol. It's a big city with a bohemian, forward-thinking, art-based culture, and I honestly feel right at home there. It's much like Brighton, just without the beach. And instead, it sits upon the River Avon. Upon the Avon. Even Eminem would be proud of that one. With venues like the Bristol Academies, the Fleece, the Croft, the Exchange, Fiddlers, the Louisiana, Beckler and good old Mr. Wolves. Bristol has a thriving live music scene. But is it any good for street music? Well, my friends, there is only one way to find these things out. And maybe you're here because you fancy trying it out for yourself, or maybe you're just here for pure entertainment purposes. Either way, here is how I got on busking in Bristol. <laughs> Welcome to Bristol. Look at that. Temple Meads in the background. Looking fabulous. I like it here in Bristol. I've visited many times. It kind of reminds me of Brighton. It has a Brighton vibe just without the sea. Um, so I'm excited to be here. I'm intrigued how it goes for busking. Obviously this city is massive. There's lots of places you could busk. Uh, I don't think I'll get to all of them today. But yeah, welcome to Bristol. What a place, Brighton without the sea. Let me go through the rules for busking here for you. The rules for busking in Bristol. Bristol Council provide busking guidelines and they state, if you don't follow these guidelines, you could get a verbal or written warning from our officers. If you continue to break the guidelines after a written warning, you could be served with a community protection notice under the provisions of the Antisocial Behaviour Crime and Policing Act 2014, or even legal action. I wonder what Banksy would make of all this. In case you weren't aware, Banksy is from Bristol. Bristol welcomes buskers and street entertainers to enliven the streets. The guidelines say that us buskers bring colour and vibrancy to the public spaces. I love it. Pure poetry. Much like most councils, Bristol provides guidelines that are laid out simply so that everyone can enjoy the public spaces, whether they're a busker, business, just general shopper. It means a positive relationship can be maintained throughout everyone. I love it. Now this is a fairly wordy document, so I'll try and condense all the points down into sort of bite-sized pieces. Point one. This essentially says don't play for more than 90 minutes and don't hog pitches. Point two just says don't block doorways, fire exits and avoid obscuring window displays. Point three, this is a colossal paragraph that, that just says don't play too loud. I like point four. They encourage you to take regular breaks and not repeat the same material. Then it says, don't hog pitches by leaving your equipment in them. I love that it uses the word hog, like it genuinely uses the word hog. No pitch hoggers. Point number five, be mindful of blocking public highways if you're likely to draw a crowd. Point number six, don't disrupt street traders, including the big issue sellers. Point seven, clean up your pitch after you've finished if you're using fire or chemicals. Point number eight, you need a license if you want to sell CDs or merch. Point number nine says you can sell CDs if they're for a donation. This is a great trick that I recommend any busker uses. You can just put an asterisk next to a recommended price and then make sure that you use the other asterisks to, to say this is a recommended donation. That way you can kind of give a price for your CD without actually having to sell it if that makes sense. Point number 10, no asking or demanding for money. Point 11, this says you must be engaging in a performance. Sitting with an instrument can be treated as begging. I guess if you're just sat down with a guitar, looking a bit scruffy and not playing it, I could see how that would work. Point 12, don't purposely busk next to a cash point. Which can be hard sometimes because so many busking pitches are outside banks. Point 13, and this is an important one, busking hours are between 10 a.m. and 11 p.m in the city of Bristol. And that's pretty late. Nice one, Bristol. 
Nice one. Point 14, be courteous to members of the public. Point 15, they recommend getting public liability insurance. All very standard, but valid points. That makes a good set of guidelines. The next section just goes on to how to deal with problems should they arise. It provides some useful contacts. And you can find this all on the Bristol Council website. Not bad at all. I particularly love that they use the word hog. Absolutely fantastic. Right, now that we're all clued up on the rules, let's get on with my day in Bristol. Spot number one. Bristol is a big place and there are multiple places dotted around the city that seem ideal for busking. I decided to opt for the Broadmead shopping area as my first spot. You can always rely on a shopping area being busy. And when I arrived, I was greeted by a beautiful, festive Christmas market. Complete with a rather hilarious reindeer that was doing some busking of his own. Check out my competition. Yeah, that's a singing moose. That's, that moose right there is singing. Maybe it's a reindeer. Shocking. I set up in front of what used to be M&S but it's now just a big black board. I figured it could do with some colour and vibrancy. Despite the grey skies, things got off to a great start. Bristol just has that friendly, welcoming, and kind of all accepting vibe. Smiles, waves, dancing, sing-alongs, and plenty of donations. I was actually in Bristol the day after I'd bust in Bath and if you've watched my previous video you'll know that that didn't go too well. Spoiler alert. Sorry. I'm sorry if you haven't watched it. So I was relieved that things in Bristol were off to a much better start. The council officers and the police walked past a few times, but nothing but waves and smiles. At some point, a guy came over and handed me a £20 note. Getting a note of any kind whilst busking feels very special. But when somebody hands over a 20, I almost become slightly overwhelmed. Sort of struck with a disbelief that this person feels like it's worth this much. I'm just overwhelmed with gratitude. I asked the dude if he was sure and he said, hey man, I'm a drummer, and I sometimes perform on the street too. Artists support artists. Wiser words have never been spoken. If you're watching, then thank you, my friend. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it when the other side of the high street reflects my sound back, and I can hear what I sound like. It's like having your own monitor. Things are going well. <sighs> the tides have changed from the last time I filmed, which was in Bath yesterday. Things feel good. After two hours or so, I decided to round things off and leave the entertainment to my robot reindeer compadre. <laughs> Woo! I tell you what, I love Bristol. Such a good place. As I already said, it just has an air to brighten about it. It's like those two places sort of, they're like twins, I'd say. Set one, spot one. Oh, I can't tell you how good it feels to have a busk like that again. 
it's been a few weeks now that I've just had these kind of half-hearted sort of not sure why I'm not getting that well received busks but that was all I needed uh, highlights include one guy came up to me handed me a 20 pound note which is like the ultimate donation right every donation counts but that's a, that's an ultimate and he just said look artists support artists you're an artist I'm an artist and he turns out he's a drummer he also plays street music so shout out to you dude if you watch this also just smiles vibes dancing people just like stoked to see me out they weren't even bothered by the singing moose which is actually a reindeer because it's a christmas market at one point some guys with a piano showed up thought they were street musicians playing piano turns out they're doing some kind of streaming film thing so that didn't matter i made 58 pound and 4p two hour bus ah we're back on track in case you didn't know bath which you watched last week i filmed yesterday and then next week video i'm filming tomorrow or planning on so this is kind of a three-day adventure um right i'm gonna move on to another spot i'm gonna head to corn street and go to the the sort of the bit by the market the cool indoor market so i'll see you there Number two. Whenever I think of Bristol, I usually think of St. Nicholas Market. So for spot two, I set up on Corn Street, which is just behind the market itself. It felt a little precarious. There was a big fancy hotel behind me, the market just in front of me, but I traveled all that way I had to give it a go. Things definitely started a little slower, but the flow of foot traffic was good. And there was a food trailer just opposite that had a nice seating area where people could sit and listen. And the reaction was still really positive. I even noticed some people stop and sit down to listen at the food trailer, which I think made the vendor happy. I'd won him over. About halfway through the set, a very polite gentleman came over and asked for a strange request. All right, I've just been asked to stop for a minute because the BBC are here filming their news segment about a murder that's happened and they just said can you stop for a bit whilst we film <laughs> that's not what i expected it's going well though now i definitely didn't want to be a soundtrack to some murder news story that is the sort of publicity i could do without I need something sweet to sing my after playing for about an hour, the security working in the St. Nicholas market came over. His exact words were this. I hate to be the bearer of bad busking news, but I'm going to have to ask that you move on. Apparently some of the market vendors inside were making a bit of a fuss and he was just doing his job. He was really friendly about it. Luckily I was going to stop anyway. It was lunchtime and there is one lunch in Bristol that is game changing. It's worth making the trip just for this. Look at that for lunch. This is from a place called Eat A Pitta, which is a spot in Bristol in St. Nicholas Market, which is where I was just playing outside. It's so good, I've had it before. One time, me and Laura, my partner, we were driving back from Devon, 
and we stopped in Bristol just so we could get this and then carried on our journey home. Um, that was really good. Another solid set for spot two. I, I liked that spot. I liked where I was. It's a bit more like scenic than standing in the shopping centre. Today's weather, it's held up like it's not rained and I'm grateful, but it's just grey. It's a classic British just grey day where it never really gets light and that's why people don't like the winter in the UK. But they liked me busking in spot two. I made £25 something. I'll put it on the screen. So the plan is now is to eat this and then head to the waterfront hopefully maybe maybe not i'm not sure i've obviously got to consider the fact that it now gets dark uh at four half four <laughs> so but yeah i'm loving bristol i kind of knew i would and it makes up for some of the more rubbish busks i've had recently anyway bon appetit sorry no french accent from me Number three. Yes, friends, Bristol was another three spotter. It seems the wind is back blowing into my busking sails. Full steam ahead. I had been wandering around Bristol for a fair while looking for another pit. I pinned multiple spots including the harbour side, the amphitheatre, Millennium Square, Cascade Steps, the Bear Pit, loads of different ones. But upon inspection, most of these spots were dead. There was no one there. I guess it was a Thursday and the weather was meh. There was just nobody really about. So I decided if it ain't broke, then why try fix it? Returning to Broadmead shopping area and setting up exactly opposite where I'd been that morning. And thank goodness I did because that evening time shopping was popping. Huh? Do you reckon Eminem would like that one? It was super busy and everyone was in really good spirits. The festive market was in full throttle. My reindeer friend was singing his heart out. All the stalls were open and this ended up being my favourite set of the day. It's not often that I busk in the evening time. Typically, I'm done around 4 p.m. So this was a kind of new experience for me. And I can see why some buskers do hold out until the sun has set before they do their thing. What a good time. Set three was the cherry on an awesome day shaped cake. Do you put cherry on cake? Bun? On a cherry bun? I don't know. It's like a fist that's bringing me down. So I went to the shore. And they said I was a bore. So cream out because it's bringing it down. Bristol. 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 If I wasn't able to live here in Brighton, I think I'd move to Bristol. It's just such a vibe. In spot three, I ended up making 31 pound and 45 pence, bringing my total for the day to 114 pound 10. Finally, we've hit a 100 pound day. Now it's been a few videos since I've been able to say that. 
Hey? Each busker is different, and each busker's act suits different places. When I compare my time in Bristol to, to my time at Bath, I honestly way preferred Bristol and seemed to do so much better there. Now, I know the days were different, but it just seems to suit what I do a lot better. Bath is a beautiful city, and I'll definitely return, but I just like my cities a little rough around the edges, but warm and soft in the middle. It's just how I roll. And I think maybe punk rock acoustic covers just probably sit with Bristol's vibe a little bit more. Either way, I highly recommend Bristol as a place to bust. And I will 100% be returning to check out those other spots. I'll have to make a summer addition to Bristol as well as many other places that I've been to lately. Thank you for watching this video. Give it a like. Give it a like for Bristol. Hit subscribe. If you haven't noticed, I've, I've hit 500 subscribers. Woo! But like all great goalposts, we now have to look ahead and reach for that 1,000. If you are a true fan, then turn the notifications on. I am August Radio Project. I make videos and they come out every week on a Monday. Until then, watch the one that's on the screen. Go and check out the others. And I will see you in the next one.